In Iran Jaya's provincial capital, Jayapura, John Rumbiak is starting another day. He's getting ready for the job he's been labouring over for years. Until very recently, he thought his work was just too dangerous to discuss publicly. Now John's decided to speak out about his work as a human rights activist. The priest from the highlands is bringing one of his young parishioners to tell his story of Indonesian army brutality. The 16-year-old's name is Aprilanus. He's come to see John Rumbiak. John has meticulously documented human rights abuses in the area near the Freeport gold mine following the release of hostages in May 1996. Aprilanus says last year he was fossicking for food near his home when he stumbled across evidence of an Indonesian army patrol. The priest tells John Rumbiak that the story of Aprilanus is not unique, that the Indonesian military, known as Abri, has treated his parishioners mercilessly. Urian Jaya occupies the western part of the island it shares with Papua New Guinea. John Rumbiak's report covers the southern highland areas near the Freeport mine. It alleges human rights abuses by Abri in the hamlets of Mafanduma, where the hostages were taken, and Bala, Alama and Gila. The hostages, seen here during their captivity, were seized by the OPM, the Free Papua Resistance. This small band of Irian Jaya fighters did succeed, temporarily gaining international attention. But after the hostages were rescued in a military raid, OPM leader Kelly Kualik and his troops were not the only ones to pay the price. John Rumbiak claims many villagers have also suffered at the hands of the army. They shoot, they don't care. They don't care about whether they are children or women or old people. It's just plain intimidation, you know, to, to, to the people to really, uh, in some settings, you can see how uh, you can say it is a way, uh, this, this is a very systematic way of uh, genociding the people. Oh, yeah, yeah. John and a small group of colleagues can only operate because they work under the protection of Irian Jaya's three Christian churches. In fact, John's report was issued in the name of the churches. The report claims that between December 1996 and October 1997, 11 people were shot and killed two more disappeared, and three more were wounded. Many more probably died, but the report restricts itself to deaths that can be verified. It also says Arbery burnt down 13 churches, 29 traditional community houses, and 166 homes. John Rumbiak concludes these were not a string of isolated incidents, but part of a systematic campaign to ethnically cleanse the Amungmi people from their traditional lands surrounding the Freeport Golden Copper Mine. It's incredible and it's very uh, systematically destroying the people because it's really uh, destroying the very uh, fundamental aspect of the people, like houses of the people, cultural houses of the people, churches and gardens. 
animals, any belongings of the people. There is also discrimination when, when they look at these uh, Melanesians. Uh, they have fuzzy hair, they wear penis guards, grass skirts, black skin, and they look at them inferior. In, in some cases, we have found out that there is, there is this kind of feeling also motivated the soldiers to kill the people. The area in question is in the Highlands, not far from where these shots were taken during recent Australian Air Force drought relief missions. It's been a no-go zone, an area outsiders are largely forbidden to enter. John Rumbiak's report claims more than 90 people may have died from hunger and disease inside this no-go zone. The Highland people live a traditional existence tending their subsistence gardens, their lives given meaning by their deeply held Christianity and their profound spiritual attachment to their land. To be driven from their land is to lose their identity. Father Jan is a Catholic priest who has worked in the area for over 30 years. The military has taken revenge on the local population. We're burning churches, we're burning community houses, we're, we're uh, burning also the, the, the gardens. Father Jan confirms that the area where the killings have taken place are controlled by the military and that foreigners, even priests and aid workers, are restricted entry. No one can, can come in without a, a special permit. And you can, you can, can get a special, a special permit from the military, and from the, not, not from the, the the, the normal administration, but must go by the, the military ranking. As he's gone about his work, Father Jan has thought deeply about why the Indonesian military has embarked on what he believes is a systematic campaign against the villagers. Avery claims it's countering an insurgency by pro-independence OPM guerrillas. But Father Jan believes the ragtag OPM poses no real threat and that neither counterinsurgency nor even bloody-minded retribution fully explains the military's systematic terror campaign. Instead, he believes Arbery is using the OPM as an excuse to drive people from their land, thereby freeing it for commercial exploitation. Now, when you look at the map, and you look where all these kinds of things are happening now, this is close to the large area, it is a little bit more to the, to the east, this area is still in the, in the concession of mining companies. And it's known that there is gold. And when they can uh, get the people out, and they are free to do what they like to do, take all the gold away. Adjacent to the military controlled no-go zone is the giant US-owned Freeport mine with gold and copper resources that make it probably the world's richest mine. It's also said to be Indonesia's biggest taxpayer. There's no evidence Freeport condones Abri's brutality. But what is clear is that future mines and logging operations will have carte blanche if the traditional owners have been driven from their lands. Jaya's mainland and many outer islands are myriad At a hotel in Timika, the town that services the giant mine, Freeport runs its promotional video. The indigenous people of Irian Jaya are Melanesians, having darker skin color and different physical features than people in other parts of Indonesia. There are major cultural and physical differences among the cultural groups of the lowlands and the coastal regions, and the highlanders of the interior. Freeport has recently offered significant royalties to traditional landowners, but the question remains, if the people are being driven from their land, how could they possibly be better off? What the Freeport video failed to mention was that Timika is also the base for all the troops in this southern area. Locals say that as well as providing security for the mine, the military is also responsible for brutal intimidation. Mother Yosefa describes herself as the mother of the OPM resistance leader, Kali Kualik, the man who held the hostages two years ago. My understanding is that she's probably using mother in a figurative sense, not so unusual in Arendjaya as she comes from Kali Kualik's community. 
She says she was signalled out by the Indonesian military. Jam 12 malam, mereka datang tujuh orang yang masuk di rumah saya. Orang-orang apa? Abri. Abri. Yeah. Abri yang masuk dengan sen- senjata yang yeah. pantat senjata yang angkar ke lambu uh-huh. dan masuk angkar saya. Kami uh-huh. lima orang yang diangkar bawa di periksa di dalam polisi uh, tentara di Kodem sana di Sempan. Selesai Kodem itu kembali masuk masuk okay. sel oh, yeah. sampai satu bulan dua hari dua malam. Saya belum makan, belum minum sampai satu bulan, dua hari, oh, iya. dua malam itu yang saya ada oh, bilang. Oh, Tapi oh. saya hampir mati. Oh, iya. Tapi Tuhan yang sudah menentukan untuk saya selamat. Irian Jaya was annexed by Indonesia in the 1960s following negotiations with the former colonial power, the Netherlands. A monument to the so-called act of free choice can be found in the provincial capital, Jayapura, as if to mock the aspirations of the West Papuan people. Although the act of free choice was endorsed by the United Nations, the indigenous people, originally promised independence by the Dutch, were given no real say. The people here have nothing in common with their Indonesian colonizers. Not race, not language, not religion, not culture. Now the province is being swamped by Javanese as part of Indonesia's transmigration program, and its resources are being exploited by multinationals and Indonesia's crony class of capitalists. This young trainee priest is a supporter of the pro-independence OPM guerrilla movement. It's not hard to understand why. The Indonesian army killed his mother. The OPM has never posed a real challenge to the Indonesians. For years, dislocated groups have fought with little more than bows and arrows. Yet this man claims the OPM is gaining strength and has new weapons from Australia and America. But for now, they're following a policy of restraint. Not to the stop. Walaupun ada bantuan, ternyata cukup lengkap sekarang ini. Dengan dia punya personal yang cukup bagus. Jauh dari, lebih bagus dari dulu. Tapi itu sudah, lagi bilang, stop dulu. Perjuangan sekarang ada di kota sini. Jadi orang mulai pakai otak sekarang. Itu, itu saja. Jadi dengan, dengan kekuatan fisik itu, one of the leaders of the political struggle in the city is Chief Thai Siloe. As one of the important traditional chiefs, he witnessed the declaration of the act of free choice in the 1960s. Now he bitterly refers to it as the act of no choice. <laughs> Chief Thais, like others in this story, is now prepared to risk Indonesia's retribution by speaking openly. He believes that with the overthrow of the Suharto regime in Jakarta, now is the time to speak against Indonesian oppression and to agitate for autonomy. He says the world should realise the OPM guerrilla movement is merely the smoke billowing from a deep-seated fire, the desire for independence. Kita punya harga diri. Kita punya hak sebagai bangsa. Kita bukan bangsa Indonesia. Kita bangsa sendiri. Oleh itu, nanti kita akan bicara sama pemerintah. Kita and also to other countries, especially to the PPP. So the PPP, we start to think about the PPP. And I'll tell you about the PPP. It's free and free. Because we start to think about God. This country, the land, the land, the human, the 
hukumnya dan hak harga dirinya kita juga. Kita pakai semua untuk memuji Tuhan. Maka itu tiap tiap mungkin Tuhan akan abaikan hal itu. Kita sedang menunggu waktu Tuhan. Karena kita pakai kekuatan tidak mungkin. Abri Indonesia lebih kuat dari kita. Kalau demikian jawabannya ialah cara Tuhan yang kita sedang menunggu. Atau waktu Tuhan yang sedang kita tunggu. The Indonesian army is conducting a dirty war in Irianjaya as the riches of the province are plundered. We need international pressure to the Indonesian government, especially military, so that they can open the areas, so that uh, church groups and also social groups, non-governmental groups, human rights groups, can come into the area and monitor uh, the situation of, of the people. The human rights violations so meticulously detailed in John Rumbiak's report are an indictment of Indonesian rule and challenge the international community to pressure the government of President Habibie to bring justice to the province. <laughs>